Good morning, Oracles. So today we've got a nice little start to the day thanks to Amazon's earnings last night. So Amazon missed a little bit on revenues, but they did well, the market cheered it, and because of that, we are now seeing the entire macro environment coming up. And now Amazon is the last of the FANG stocks to report earnings. So it's a great way to finish off all of those monster earnings. Let's see if we can continue this, uh, because looking at Tesla, we know it's still going to be a roller coaster ride for a while. And I'm looking at maybe if we can get three days of a rally, perhaps, going into the potential fudge coming from the CPI data next Thursday, maybe we start to flirt with $1,000 again. We shall see. I'm not too um, hell-bent on the short-term price swings of the stock. For me, again, I am playing in my IRA, just, you know, trying out the whole buying, selling for some profits because it's a tax-free Roth IRA, so I can maybe gain myself some extra stocks later. It's just a little thing I'm doing. It is risky. I do not recommend it for everyone. Uh, do your own due diligence on that but I'm going to be trying it myself. So I'm going to monitor this, see how it goes, but I'm still going to be dollar cost averaging into Tesla in my main account. Now my dollar cost average strategy is going to change slightly. As the market changes, we need to change as well with it because that is what makes an agile investor. So for me, what I'm going to end up doing is I've noticed that, you know, I do my strategy. I put in $15 every day into Tesla and then I add another $15 for every percent it drops. But because of the roller coaster ride that we have been on, I noticed that the stock goes up and then it comes back. And my percent drop buy ins keep on ending up around the same point between 850 and 950. So there's nothing wrong with that. Obviously, long term, the stock is going to do well. And I'm not concerned about buying in at that price. But my cash reserves have been dwindling below where I would like them. So I'm going to put a little uh, note into my own mental state and say, if it drops a percent, but the price is still above $900, I am not going to be buying. I'm going to wait till it drops below 800. And then as I build up my cash reserves to that point, what I will end up doing is monitoring and say, okay, when I am uh, over 3%, over 5%, I will then say, okay, now I can start uh, adding more in on a more regular basis. We do still have a gap to fill down to 846. Again, gaps only fill nine out of 10 times, but we have seen in the past couple of months that the stock gaps have been filled regardless of how low they were and how you know it seemed like it could never get down there, and it did. So I am still monitoring that. Again, not guaranteed that it will get filled, but I wanna make sure that if we do get back down there, I've got some extra cash on hand to be able to buy a little bit more. And one of the reasons I really think this gap is going to get filled is we do have CPI data coming out next Thursday. If it comes in um, unexpectedly high, I think we're going to see a major issue in the market and all gaps will get filled. Now we did see last Monday that there was a giant tech jump over the weekend and so a lot of tech stocks have gaps to fill. So this tells me that there's a giant gap in the market that needs to get filled. So whether that gets filled next week or in uh, the middle of March when we get the first rate hikes going up, you know, or in between for whatever reason, I think we are going to definitely see another pullback in this roller coaster ride of a year. So I just wanna be prepared for that. So I'm starting to save up more cash. I do have my cash reserve plays. So, you know, I have the backup cash there if needed. So I'm gonna utilize those to be able to dip into Tesla more as it dips more. Again, I have no idea how low it's going to go. Mentally, I'm preparing myself for an 825 to 850 range dip. Uh, could it go lower? Of course it can go lower. Uh, anything can happen in this market. We've seen trillion dollar stocks swinging 20% on earnings it's absolutely nuts so again we don't know where it's going to be going um, but i just want to be ready for that and i don't want to keep on investing too much money kind of on a flat plane right now and run out of cash and not be able to take advantage of it if it dips lower and now to be honest if i had enough cash on hand this wouldn't even be a question we just happen to get for my own personal portfolio lower than my cash threshold i would like so i want to build up my cash reserves I don't think we have hit a bottom. I don't know if this is kind of the bottom-ish and we're just gonna travel sideways for a while. I don't know. Um, so again, dollar cost averaging is the best and wisest way to go when it's investing long-term. 
but for me, uh, I would eventually be completely all in and that's not what I'm comfortable with. And so now looking at some of the great fundamentals when it comes to Tesla, we can compare it to GM and Ford who just had their earnings over the last week as well. Now looking at profitability, Tesla is more profitable than GM. Does that surprise anyone? No. Um, so looking at that going forward, you know, Tesla has about a quarter of the revenue, but they have more profits. So when we are all discussing the gross margins and whether, you know, Tesla should be valued as a automotive company or as a tech company, I mean, it's kind of clear. You can see through the profits and the profit margins that Tesla, their value is significantly closer to a tech company than it is to an automotive maker. So these automotive makers of GM and Ford are going to be getting into EVs. They're dumping a ton more money and investing a lot more money into making EVs. But you gotta remember, they're still at the point where Tesla was in 2017 and 2018. And 2018 was definitely a rough time for Tesla trying to come out with the Model 3. So while the, uh, the legacy automotive makers do have a lot more capital on hand to be able to invest into the EV area, it's still, they have a lot of expenses. ICE vehicles are expensive to make. EV starting up is expensive to make. And so it's going to take them a while to get profitable if they can ever get there. And their inability to be as profitable as Tesla is glaringly obvious in the fact that the Secretary of Commerce reached out and said, you know what, I'm going to be calling Tesla and asking them for their assistance on the chip supply shortage. Now the problem is, you can't fix the past. The reason Tesla has been able to navigate the chip shortage uh, for themselves is because they are so vertically integrated, because they have built up relationships with their vendors over the last five years. Legacy automotive makers have not done that. So you can't fix the past. So it's not like Tesla can be like, oh, hey, here's the solution to your problems. And not only that, but does Tesla really want to? I mean, I know Elon is a good guy, wants to help the world, but dude, you've been snubbing Tesla and ignoring them for as long as the administration has been around. And now you're asking for help so that your automotive companies that you're in collusion with can succeed better? Uh, no thanks. No, let them figure it out on their own. I mean, after all, I thought they were the ones who were leading the way. So anyway, um, that's just my personal opinions on that. But uh, again, this is just proving that Tesla truly does have the lead on all levels. And as far as the actual numbers go for profits and for revenues, Tesla will be taking over those numbers for the actual official lead in the next few years. And the last piece I wanted to discuss is these recalls that are coming out for Tesla. So there's two recalls that came out, one for 54,000 vehicles and another for 871,000 vehicles for both that are software fixes that are going to be fixed over the air. So just as a reminder, this is like your iPhone or your Android having uh, an operating system you know, bug that came out and they had to patch the bug and it's fixed. That's it, that's literally all it is and we never hear those being called recalls. So this is just a lot of media FUD coming out so when you hear things like this, this is a good opportunity to buy more on a dip. We already talked about that and the way the macro environment's trading. But looking back to last year, when they were talking about the break issues and this and that, that was a lot of FUD. And that, looking back on it, became a great buying opportunity for the stock. These things like this are going to act as the same exact thing. They're gonna act as great buying opportunities. So whenever we hear stuff like this, um, it's, it's a great opportunity to be like, you know what? We understand the reality of it. It is not actual problems with the vehicle. It is actually a good thing in my eyes. This is now proving that Tesla has such an advantage over all the legacy automotive makers. Looking at the fact that they have what is a recall that can be fixed literally the next day with a quick bug patch, done. It's solved. They don't have to go out there and manually fix cars. Owners don't have to bring their cars down to a dealership or a repair center to get them fixed. Tesla can just patch it over the air. The cost savings on that is enormous. You think about the costs that, you know, like a GM or a Ford have to pay when they have a recall and then all these owners have to bring their cars down to the dealerships. The dealerships then have to spend money and time between manpower and parts to get these vehicles fixed. 
that doesn't exist for Tesla. So all of those costs are gone. So, you know, I would love to see what the actual cost is of these over the air uh, recall fixes. So let me know, actually, if you guys know, let me know in the comments if you know the cost it takes to fix these patches uh, and these recalls, because it would be interesting to compare those to a recall cost that it has for a legacy automotive maker. Because again, these costs add up and adding up those costs is just showing exactly why Tesla is more profitable and will continue to be more profitable than all of the legacy automotive makers. It's just the way they are built. Let me know in the comments below, how do you feel about the Secretary of Commerce finally acknowledging the fact that Tesla exists and they are reaching out to them for help? Let me know if you think Elon should give them any advice. And let me know how you feel about these recalls that have been coming out and, and if they really should be called recalls or what they should be called. Thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate all of your support and feedback. If you have not subscribed, please do so down below. Sign yourself up for notifications. I am over on Twitter at OracleTim1. I share all of the latest Tesla news, pertinent stock market information, and all of my daily trades. Thank you so much. Have a great one.